In this video, I'll show you how to access Prezi and start building your exhibition. Then I'll work on an example Prezi so you can see how the design principles you learned about in the first video can be put to use. In the first video, we learned about using cat and crap to create effective designs. Let's do a quick recap. Cat reminds us to keep conceptual, aesthetic, and technical considerations in mind as we develop a design project. Think about your audience and what you're trying to achieve. When you have a clear idea of your goals, you can use the CRAP toolbox to develop a coherent and compelling aesthetic for your work. Design also requires attention to technical issues, like choosing the right tool, using it well, and ensuring the accessibility of your design. Let's see how these principles play out in Prezi. Prezi is an online presentation creation platform. As students, you can access the free tier of Prezi by signing up at www.prezi.com. There's also a $3 per month education tier, which has slightly more customizability and allows you to create presentations without the Prezi logo in the corner. Once you've signed up and logged in, you'll see this home screen. To begin, you can either use a template or start from scratch. Starting from scratch will let you build out your exhibition from the ground up. A template starts you off with a color palette and other design elements, which you can edit if you choose. For the purposes of explanation, let's start from scratch. In Prezi, you create a story by arranging topics which are visually represented by shapes on the screen. Just like in a real gallery, the viewer is led through these topics along a path. On this first page, you can edit the title of the exhibit. You can increase or decrease the font size and change the font. Elements you add to this main page, like text, photos, or shapes, can provide introductory information or add visual interest. Keep in mind, though, that this first page is the hub of your story. That means you want to make sure there's room for all the topics you want to include and that these topic shapes don't get lost. Think about whether you want to group or separate elements using proximity and negative space to arrange things in an intentional way. You can change the default colors, fonts, and shapes through the style drop-down menu in the navigation bar at the top. There are a number of default palette options. However, you can only edit these default palettes or create your own custom palette if you are on the paid account tier. Now, let's take a look at one Prezi that I've already started. I want to create an exhibit about a kind of illustrated text that I know well, zines, or self-published magazines. I place the title in two colored blocks in the top left corner because it's important information, and I know that viewers that read from left to right usually start there. I chose these shapes because I think they look like two pages of an open zine, and that aligns with my concept for the exhibit. Because zines are usually more DIY and homemade, I think I might switch the title font to something less clean and modern. So I'll click on the text box and select the font dropdown. Let's try permanent marker. That really changes the feel of things. You can see that I have two topics already placed on the hub page. I can add another by clicking Add Topic. If I click on one of these topics, you'll notice that each one is labeled with a number and connected by a dotted line. This shows you that when a viewer is moving through the story, they'll be directed to the orienting topic first, along with all its subtopics, and then to bodies. You'll also see this displayed, like presentation slides, in the menu to the left. 
to reorder topics, just click and drag the slides in this sidebar into the order you want. Let's zoom in and talk about subtopics. To view, edit, and add subtopics under Orienting, I can either double click on, on the topic itself or click once on the slide in the sidebar. Right now, I have two subtopics under Orienting. I can move them around if I want to. You'll notice though that I have them aligned and that they're both the same color and shape. This establishes a visual logic. Subtopics are pink, distinguishing them from the topic shape that they sit on. If I wanted a more serious or conservative tone, I might have chosen a different color palette. But whatever I choose, I'll continue that pattern throughout the Prezi design so it looks consistent. The viewer knows what to expect. I can also add some text under the header here if I wanted to provide an introduction. To add text, subtopics, images, or other elements, just click Insert in the menu above. Just like in the hub page, each subtopic has a path going from one to another. You can edit this path by rearranging items in the sidebar. To edit a subtopic, click its slide in the sidebar or double click on the subtopic shape. In this subtopic, I have some framing text and a scanned image of a zine. For your project, you could feature a page opening and then include a card that includes the source, date, author, or other info, like you might find at a traditional exhibition. To zoom out, click the little arrow button on the right, or press the left arrow key on your keyboard. Let's try adding a subtopic to bodies. I want to make sure that each subtopic is the same size and color and shape as the other ones I've already created. So I'm going to copy and paste the subtopic we were looking at before. Now, I can click on the text box and edit it. I want to make sure the text is centered in the shape, so I'll click and drag until I see those red alignment marks. I also want the shape behind it to intersect at the midpoint so that the text and shape alignments are the same. I think that looks much nicer. When we zoom into this subtopic, I see that the default color text is white. Because the background color is pink, it's hard to see what the text says, even for someone with pretty good vision. So let's change it to black so the contrast is appropriate. Now I'm going to add an image from my computer. I'll click and drag on the image to make it large enough to be legible. I'm also doing a visual check to make sure the image looks okay. There's no graininess, pixelation, or stretching. It looks good to me. Once you've finished putting together your Prezi, you can share a link to view the final product. Go to your Prezi homepage, then find the presentation. Click on the three dots in the bottom right, then click Share View Link. Select Create New Link and give the link a name. Here, I've already created a link. When they follow that link, viewers will be directed to a static version of your exhibition that they can navigate through using the arrow keys to follow the story path or by clicking directly on the themes and sub-themes they want to investigate. I hope this presentation has sparked some ideas about using contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity to create an effective digital exhibition in Prezi. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget, Design Lab is here to help you with your project. Due to the pandemic, we have suspended all in-person appointments, but we are still offering appointments via video calls. 
You can make an appointment from the Design Lab website by clicking the pink Make an Appointment button. You can also start a chat with us using our new chat service, which is open anytime Design Lab is open. From anywhere on the Design Lab website, click Chat with Design Lab in the main menu. We look forward to working with you.